Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Hope you guys are well. I'm Arnold. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Xcode. With a bunch of other developers, I'm currently working uh, on the KubeDB project. Today, uh, I'm uh, going to show you the, uh, the overall update of our uh, currently uh, new uh, project, which is uh, the uh, integrating the gatekeeper with Xcode ecosystem for policy management. And uh, this, uh, I'm showing you the updates about this project. And I'm also expecting suggestions and feedback from you guys for the betterment of our project. So uh, let's start. Today, uh, I'm going to cover uh, these contents. Firstly, I'll uh, introduce, introduce you to uh, the policy management tool, Gatekeeper. Uh, then uh, I'm going to uh, describe the CRDs of Gatekeeper, like mutation uh, for mutation validation templates and external providers. Then I'm going to show, uh, uh, give a live demo about the Gatekeeper indication. Uh, number four, uh, I'm going to explain uh, the concept of a resource graph and how I uh, we are going to utilize this resource graph in our uh, integration. And then uh, monitoring how to monitoring the policies using uh, Prometheus and uh, Grafana. And uh, lastly, uh, there will be a Q session for uh, for your uh, questions and answer sessions. Okay, so. Uh, why uh, the policy management in a Kubernetes cluster is so important? Because uh, if uh, if you are a Kubernetes administrator, you uh, always wants to uh, betterment of, of your uh, cluster. Like uh, you, you want to uh, apply some annotation on all your deployment or on all your, your port, something like this. So, so that you can uh, uh, watch uh, those annotation and uh, work with some other operators uh, of your uh, developed uh, operators. So, if uh, you need to ensure those annotations, or this is an example, or you can add some levels, or you can uh, check the uh, image registry or something like that. But for example, let's say you want to add annotation. So, you want to add annotation on your all deployment, but if you do so hand by hand that will be very troublesome for you so if you want to manage uh, the whole cluster resources all at once so th that's why uh, that's why policy management uh, comes into picture and uh, for policy management gatekeeper is already a well-known uh, uh, tool for uh, managing the policies so we are going to uh, actually uh, incorporate this uh, policy management tool uh, called Gatekeeper into our Xcode ecosystem so that we, uh, we like uh, our uh, KTS uh, administrator, we can uh, actually handle those policies and our Kubernetes cluster very easily. So uh, to implement uh, Gatekeeper, uh, to integrating Gatekeeper with our uh, Xcode ecosystem, we need to uh, first uh, introduce with uh, this Gatekeeper CRDs Gatekeeper uh, actually uh, gives six uh, API group and uh, some some uh, useful CRDs to handle the policies. So let's say first uh, we can talk about the mutations. In the mutation API group, under the mutation API group, there are multiple uh, CRDs named assign, assign metadata, modify set. We're going to cover all uh, these things in details later. So this is just an uh, overview, right? So it has uh, these six API group and uh, these uh, SN, SN metadata and modify set CRDs are uh, to general, uh, generalize the mutation part of the policies. This uh, configs uh, CRD actually give the overall uh, configuration. Those are not maintained by specific resources. And uh, these templates are for validation. So you can uh, create a constant template and then with this template structure, you can create constants for uh, validate the uh, resources of your Kubernetes uh, cluster. The external data API group gives uh, a provider, uh, the external provider. So this provider uh, can actually uh, act like, like as a web book. So uh, if you want to add an external uh, hook, external server onto your Kubernetes cluster, for actually validating or mutating uh, 
or extending uh, those resources, you can use this feature. And uh, there are other also two. Uh, the first one is status. This status is actually for uh, auditing purpose uh, so that uh, we can manage which uh, which gatekeeper ports is actually watching uh, your cluster resources. Uh, let's go into details into of, the, of this series. In the samples folder, uh, I have those here this uh, example. Here, let's say first we can talk about the mutation part. You have already uh, seen that uh, mutation has uh, assign, assign material, and modify set series. So these three are here. On the assign uh, metadata, uh, assign kind, here the name is uh, demo sidecar. And here we are uh, going to uh, apply this policy for uh, core V1 ports. So this is going to uh, watch the ports actually, and uh, those ports who, which actually uh, namespaced object, and uh, these are the kinds. So it watches the ports and it applies to the ports. And here is the uh, location. I want to uh, actually mute it uh, these ports. So I want to uh, see the location here. Here I want to patch the stack containers which uh, the container name is networking. So we are assigning these values into this container. So if you uh, apply uh, this assign uh, CRD uh, onto your Kubernetes cluster, and then you create a port which doesn't have a, a networking uh, container. So this, uh, this policy, this mutation uh, will uh, actually mutate this container onto your port. Similarly, uh, similarly, this is SN metadata CRD. Here, uh, the match is uh, namespaced object. So, you want to ensure uh, that all the namespace um, annotation is set to owner admin. So, in that case, uh, as this is actually assigning into the metadata section, so this CRD is named SN metadata, and this was named SN simply. Those were on the spec section. Here. And the third one is modify set. If uh, if you have a list uh, list kinds uh, here, you can see that these are direct values uh, we are assigning into it. But if you have a, a list kind like arguments, so uh, these arguments is a list. So you can uh, actually add an argument into your spec container like this. So uh, these are the mutation series. Let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, config, se config section. Here is an example of uh, a gatekeeper config. Here you can see that uh, the name is config simply, and it is, it is a namespace. It is a namespace uh, CRD. And here you can see that uh, I want to uh, sync the port and the namespace of my cluster. So uh, let's uh, think about its use case. Uh, if you uh, want to um, actually ensure that uh, your service is actually uh, referring your correct ports, so you you have uh, access to the ports, but you don't have access to all, all the ports of your cluster. In that case, if you want to access all the ports or all the uh, resources of your cluster, in that case, you want to sync those resources in, of your cluster with a config so that we can uh, uh, we can actually refer those uh, into the repo file. We are going to show you the repo file very quickly, like this. So we are going to uh, refer the inventory. So we are uh, in the uh, when I'm I will give the repo example that will be much more clear. For now. Uh, it's, it's, it's simply we are referring those uh, synced uh, namespace and ports resources with this. So we are referring the inventory, which has been uh, synced by this. And uh, we are going to refer uh, the service of the demo namespace named Mongo ports, like this. So it is uh, for uh, referring into the regu file, which has been uh, actually applied for uh, the policy uh, control controlation. And here uh, you can see the an another example of config. Here I want to exclude some namespaces. 
for example, uh, I don't want to watch the uh, uh, cube hyphen something. This this type of namespaces I don't want to watch to. So I can exclude those namespaces, and I don't want uh, want uh, want to audit or I don't want to see those things. So these parts are actually here. So in these things, I don't want to audit all the resources of this namespace like this. So this has been gone uh, mutation and config part. Let's say about the external data part. Let's say okay. In the external data, for example, uh, you uh, have a airtight cluster. Like you want to uh, use all your uh, uh, Docker images for your from your own private registry. In that case, uh, if you want to uh, ensure that all these uh, images, those have been used on your ports are from your private registry and those private registry images don't contain any uh, security vulnerabilities like uh, uh, CVs. So in that case, you want to ensure a external server like you in, in this URL, their server is running on from your side, so you are handling those resources, and you are uh, just giving the CI bundle and uh, the syncing timeout. So when you actually apply uh, the policies, like here is an example, you can see that here uh, we are actually input review object is the object that we are referring. So for example, we are referring a port. So uh, if a port spec template so these are the images of the port. So these images uh, actually are going to pass into the external data provider. So, so that you can uh, maintain those images uh, are actually CV free or these are from your private registry and so on and so forth. So we are uh, just uh, actually referring the port images uh, of your uh, deployment or ports or some workloads onto the uh my provider named provider so this is the provider name my provider and we are uh, just referring uh, the external data is a built-in function of gatekeeper and we are just referring the provider name and this is the list we are uh, passing into so here uh, the provider request in the in this provider request section so we are passing uh, these my list images so these my list images actually will be received into the request section of the provider request and you uh, your web server or web server uh, those which is been running on this url will work with this provider request uh, this provider request and will uh, response like this so this res uh, you need to uh, fill up the response part of the provider response here uh, struct and uh, those response will actually be returned onto the review file and our uh, templates or the policy will actually uh, will work from uh, the review file uh, to validate it. So this is the flow for external data providers. The next thing is expansion. Let's uh, open it up. Uh, for the expansion, uh, the use case is like you can think uh, that uh, mm, uh, we have written a uh, policy for port. So uh, if you apply a deployment, those deployment, uh, the ports for this deployment can uh, violate your uh, some policies, like you can think that. So if, uh, if you don't uh, apply the expansion template, you just apply the policy. So uh, the policy will not reject your creation of deployment. So it will create, uh, it will reject the uh, creation of ports. So uh, if you want to uh, reject the creation of the workloads of those ports, you need to uh, apply a expansion template like so. In that case, in this case, you are actually uh, referring the ports. So you have already uh, a policy for port and uh, you want to actually, if uh, the generated ports actually violates the policy, you need to uh, you need to reject those workloads. So this uh, this is the generated GVK for port, and you want to reject the uh, deployment demonstrate this uh, these workloads. 
like this. So this is a very useful feature. So you don't need to actually uh, write repo file for all these things. You just uh, write to re write repo file for ports, and you are just referring those uh, those uh, workloads. Uh, this is uh, for expansion and uh, lastly uh, it is uh, the status uh, api group here is an example it is uh, for uh, the management purpose actually so so that uh, you can see that here uh, in this uh, in this port get it uh, this this port actually uh, running this operation it is auditing it is mutating and it is uh, getting the status so it is uh, for uh, just for uh, management purpose so it doesn't have a sketch for the user section directly and uh, lastly uh, this is the templates we are going to uh, show these uh, templates and uh, constant templates and constraints in details uh, in uh, in next slides so uh, here is an example of uh, constraints uh, before uh, actually uh, describing uh, this constraint here, we are uh, going to uh, we, we need to show the constraint template first. Let's see what is this. So in uh, here, you can see that there is a template. This is uh, the constraint template and this is uh, the constraint. So let's talk about this. Here in this constant template, uh, we have already uh, I have already said that this constant template are actually for validating uh, the uh, cluster policies. So, for example, we uh, we are uh, we want to ensure that the uh, the ports uh, replica limits are uh, always uh, in in this range. It is uh, going to at least three replica and it uh, it has max replicas of 50 so we want to ensure all the deployments with this uh, this policy like so so we need to uh, apply a template for this and then we are going to apply constraint so uh, we'll we'll look at this what happened so let's first talk about the template here is uh, the metadata section so these are name and annotation in the CRD part, uh, this uh, this you can think about a CRD of CRD. Like uh, this is a CRD, okay, constant template, and you are creating another CRD from this. So in my cluster, I I don't have any uh, CRD named KTS replica limits. Uh, I don't have this, but after applying this constraint template, I will uh, have a uh, CRD named uh, KTS replica limits like so and, and this this is the properties of the CRD this is a, a typical open API schema you can see here and it has uh, two uh, it, it has a list okay it it has the property range which is a list and it has two items the first one is min replicas the next one is max replicas okay so this is the CRD definition. I want to refer into this like so. It is range and max replica main replica. Okay. And uh, for the target section, we are going to uh, give the full regu file. This regu file actually validate those these policies, which will be applied for from the constraint to ML. So in the regu file, uh, we need to give a set a uh, target, which is a mission controller, as we are going to validate in those. And uh, this is a uh, package name for Rego. You can uh, set it up like what do you, what do you want. And uh, the deployment name, uh, why why it is deployment name? Because we are uh, going to match the deployments only uh, on the constraints. This, so we will uh, get the metadata name. So this is the deployment we will get from the actual uh, review object. So this is going to be reviewed by our Rego policy uh, logic. And uh, this is a particular structure. And the structure is you need to always give a violation uh, rule on the Rego file, which has message property. So this is a very strict uh, rule uh, 
of the rig file. In there, if you uh, want to, uh, if you send the message up, so you need, you need to uh, set the message on the onto the rig file. So I uh, I want to hear, make sure that the limit is going to set onto this range. So in the template, I'm going to see that if it is a input replica limit and this replica limit actually uh, validate that because input review object replica, this is uh, the provided uh, replica count, which has been on to set onto the deployment. And I have count, this is a built-in function, okay. Uh, the, I have counted the uh, input ranges. So I have checked those ranges if something has been set here. And if it is greater than zero, so there is something is set. And we are going to arrange over this uh, input parameter ranges. So we are going to range over this property. And uh, onto this property, uh, I have uh, checked the value within range. So I have checked that this is the range and this is the provided value. So I have checked just mean replica is less or equal uh, replica. So and so this is the actual logic. And if it is not a input replica limit, so I have checked here that it is uh, not uh, violated or not. So if it is uh, violated, in that case, we are going to keep this message that the provider number of replicas is not allowed for this deployment, like so. So we are going, going to validate those uh, cluster resources like this. Let's uh, apply onto our cluster. And uh, here, let's apply it. First, I'm going to apply the template. Okay, template, and then the constraint. Also, uh, we're going to watch all the constant templates and uh, constraints here. Okay, we are watching. Let's go back to it. So, if, uh, if you can see now, I have uh, actually described this uh, constraint. And uh, for the installation part, I have already uh, installed uh, the Prometheus uh, operator, uh, Cube Prometheus tech actually. And then I have installed the Cube UI server uh, of version 2023 latest version. This uh, and uh, set the monitoring uh, release uh, monitoring service monitor levels to release Prometheus. Those has been actually uh, referred by this this one. And lastly, I have already installed uh, the gatekeeper operator. Uh, here you can see that I have the constant validation limit is set to 60. So uh, there will be uh, all those things already set up in my cluster. In the live demo part, I have already uh, applied uh, the template and constraint for the replica limit part. And we are going to apply two more. Those is actually container template. We're going to see those into details. So let's see what uh, we have just applied uh, from the container request folder. Here you can see that uh, this is uh, the template and uh, this is a big template actually. And uh, this is uh, the constraint. So let's uh, talk about this. This is uh, this has uh, the same structure like uh, before. It is uh, a kind of constant template which is has a name and has a, a CID spec. So in the CID spec, I have give a open API victory schema, which we have already known that it is a CID of CID. So with this CID, we're going to uh, create uh, this, uh, the CID named gate as container request onto our Kubernetes cluster. This is the API victory schema. And in that, uh, I have three fields. Uh, the number one is exempt image. So 
uh, I want to uh, uh, avoid these images for val from validation. This is uh, this field means exempt image, uh, CPU field and a memory field. So we are going to refer those into here into the parameter section. So here it is the repo file of uh, of the KDS container request CRD. Here you can see that uh, it is uh, the package of the repo file, and you can also import some uh, repo from other packages or from other code base into your uh, repo uh, policy validation. Here I have imported data dot leave uh, exempt container is is exempt function and which has been already uh, referred here in the in this. So leave dot exempt container. This is the package name which I have been referred here. Leave dot exempt container and this is this has been referred by the data keyword. So we are going to uh, is exempt uh, import the is exempt. So this is the function I'm, I import in my review file. And uh, here we have uh, the same structure. Here you can see that there there is a violation property which you, you have already seen. Uh, this, this violation property you need to set the message uh, for uh, if if there is a violated or not to mention it. And in the violation uh, violation rule, we are going to refer another rule which is the general violation rule. And uh, these violation are actually odd, so it will check if the containers are violated, or it will check if the init containers are violated one by one. So you can think this as uh, typical functions for from your profile. So general violation here you can see that there is lots of general violation rules. So these I have already seen. Uh, said that these are odd property. So this general violation call will be odd uh, one by one. So we uh, we want to uh, like you can think that we want to ensure that the replica uh, container request are not more than this. We want to ensure that. So we we are referring the general violation here. The input review object, input review object is the ports we're referring here. So if uh, if the uh, ports field, so field is set to containers and init container. So we are uh, looping into the ports containers one by one and checking it is, is exempt or not. So what does the is exempt, exempt function does? It, get, it gets a container and then it actually uh, object dot get it is a uh, built-in function of uh, the repo. So we are getting uh, the parameter section from our input object, and this is the default value. So we are getting the parameter section like this, getting the parameter section, and then from the parameter section we are going to exempt image section. So. Uh, this exempt image actually we what we will refer onto the constant requirement. So these exempt uh, images we have got, and uh, this is the container image we have uh, want to check which container it is. So we are passing from the general validation rules by looking through the containers and in containers. And uh, if uh, it matches the exemption, so how how are we going to checking if if it match the exemption? If uh, the uh, exemption actually starts with star, uh, uh, start with star. So if it is uh, set like uh, exempt namespace, like so, parameters exempt namespace, and if it is a star below. So uh, this actually uh, exempting all the uh, all the images, exempt images actually it is. So it is exempting all the images from here. But if if there is some like cube hyphen star so something like uh, this type of regex, in that case we are going to exempt all the images that start with cube hyphen, like this. 
so we have checked this one here if uh, it ends with the star in that case we are uh, going to uh, checking if the image is actually starts with the exempt part of or not if if the image is like this uh q hyphen tp like this like this so in that case we are going to exempt those images okay and in 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 this case if it is not a star in that case we are going to actually directly uh, yeah, comparing those so if it is directly a value x y z like this we are going to in that case we are exempting directly x y z images okay so this is the exam part and later uh, after the general violation we are uh, going to uh, check those resources is actually uh, uh, cpu request if there are cpu request or memory request there so this uh, this has been checked from the canonic canonify mem function in that case we are going to uh, get the values like like this so for example we can give an example uh, in the cpus are actually referred by uh, 100 m something like this or or 0 0.1 something like this so there are uh, two cases in that in this case we are going to uh, re remove the uh, m so we can say that uh, this is 100 millicode and in this case it is uh, referred as 4 so we are going to 0 0.1 and it is going to be multiplied by 1000 so these are the internal calculation that has been uh, it has been done here in the in this so we are going to uh, multiply thousand but if it is m uh, th these are very uh, simple rules actually just for getting the actual value of the cpu request and memory request so uh, let's go back to the terminal here I have already applied uh, two template and two constraint into my Kubernetes cluster, and uh, you can here I am watching those constant template of all the namespace. Here you can see that uh, I have found the uh, eleven violation for replica limit uh, constraint, where I have checked uh, if the limits are from three to uh, fifty. Uh, this one. I can, see you again this one and in the uh, container master request in that case uh, we have found 53 violation which is just described earlier so these are the violation uh, total violation and the if you uh, get those one by one there is the constraints we're going to get the YML of this one just to show you an example okay you missed only one resource in that case i need to here is the YML i want to see This is just uh, okay. I need to cross it. Let's see again. Uh, there is no to specify. Okay. I'm just going to name it like this and going to give it directly the name okay here is the uh, yml of the constraint here i have uh, applied this one and i'm uh, running this as enforcement action as a warning mode so this supports other modes like uh, audit or try run something uh, deny these ones so we i'm just going to warning uh, give a warning to the cluster administrator 
and and i am going to refer the deployments of uh, all the deployments of uh, apps api group and this is the uh, logic i want to apply in my cluster and uh, in the status section you can see that here is the violation so uh, in this one violations there are total violation 11 and for each of the violation you, you can see the details here so the first violation is the gatekeeper control manager port which uh, deployment which is running in the gatekeeper system space which uh, don't have the uh, don't maintain the limit so these are the deployment resources has been validated uh, from this cluster so you can get the details from here for uh, managing those policies now uh, i'm going to introduce you uh, to the resource graph uh, why we uh, need resource graph for example uh, you have already uh, applied a constraint of uh, uh, of for deployments okay so uh, for the deployment part uh, you want to uh, see uh, what service accounts actually violated so you you have uh, you, you are watching a deployment policies but you want to see which service accounts are being used for the deployments this, this, those are being violated on your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, you, it, it seems uh, I, I need to give you an example to verify this. So in the resource graph, uh, we actually built a uh, graph from the graph tail uh, of uh, a complete, uh, complete connection of those uh, resources. So if I uh, apply this, uh, we are internally making a graph a resource graph which all those resources are connected with this uh, mgrs port of the demo network so let's give a concrete example we're actually going to apply this the name is resource graph and we will show what is tips okay uh, let's redirect it onto a file like response.yml. Okay, and uh, I'm going to show that response.yml into my uh, guest code. So I have applied, uh, I want to see all uh, the resources of uh, the QDB provisional uh, deployment of the QDB namespace, which are being connected with this. So this in the connection section, in the response, uh, we are uh, populating those fields from our UI server operator. Let's see one by one what it says. It is a very long series, I think. I need to first refer the resources part. So with this, uh, with this deployment named uh, QDB Provisioner, all these resources are connected. So those, uh, that deployment is actually connected with this node, with the ports, with secrets, with services, service accounts, so this is the list of the resources I have got. So these resources are connected with the deployment and how they are connected. In that case, we need to, uh, let's say, this is the connection. We are going to give you an exam, concrete example. So these are the connections here. Here you can see that the connection level is ID. So these levels are being maintained into the in, inside the GraphQL to when we generate the graph. And here, the source is uh, uh, source ID is four and the target source ID is eight. So what does this refer? This four and eight actually referring these resources. So this is the zero, one, two, three, four. So this, the four element is the service account and five, six, seven, Eight and eight is the cluster running. So this this actually say the service account and cluster binding are actually 
actually connected with uh, with those uh, with that deployment. How how is it connecting? So uh, these and these are actually connecting by the ID levels. So this actually maintained by inside the GraphQL. And after uh, we get the full resource graph, uh, we can utilize that resource graph for getting a particular policy report. So here you can see that this policy report actually utilizing uh, this resource graph internally and uh, we are getting the all the policies policy validation for uh, this under this uh, refer deployment so if uh, if for example you are using uh, qdb so in that case you want to uh, you you want to get all the policy validation under a qdb database so for example you are running mongodb using qdb in that case you you want to ensure that all the a policy evaluation under this mode we mode we actually creating the stateful set uh, the service account the cluster rules so you want to see all those violation under this uh, this single workload so in that case we are uh, we are utilizing that resource graph so uh, after applying this policy report, report we are actually creating a resource graph of of this resource referred resource and then from the referred resource list, from the from this list here, you can see from this list you uh, you are going to uh, get the policy violation which I have uh, already seen here. Here, if th this one, this this policy violation. So these policy violations are actually for. Uh, this name namespace so we have we have matched this name namespace and api group resources with the uh, uh, with the resources have been those have been found from the resource group so let's apply uh, the policy report yes so we're going to create the policy report here and here is the example and um, we're just going to uh, referring to redirecting into it let's name it this response okay and uh, here is the response so uh, this uh, this deployment we have already got the uh, resource graph of the connected resources of this deployment and from the deployment uh, connected graph we have uh, seen that these are the uh, ports and deployment those actually validate our policies so here is the list for example uh, this port the qbb provisional port which has been connected with the qbb provisional deployment and these uh, these ports actually uh, don't uh, don't have uh, the resource request so it is the message you can see the violation and this is the enforcement action warning so uh, if if it, it was a deny action in that case uh, we don't we we can't actually create the port it, it will deny th those and uh, for the next violation you can see that the replica limit is uh, not allowed for deployment because uh, this deployment has only one uh, rep uh, port replica and we are actually uh, ensuring the minimum replica to three so this has been added and this is uh, the policy report so uh, in that case we are going to show another things before going to future work uh, to actually manage and monitor uh, this policy violation, we have already uh, created uh, some matrices uh, on our UI server and some Grafana dashboards uh, too. So let's uh, show that. Okay. We are just, just going to put forward the UI server so that I can show you the matrices here directly. Okay, I'm going to 
see here. So uh, these are the matrices exported from our UI server in the slash matrix endpoint. And here you can see that uh, these are the policy violation, policy violation occurrence total. So there has been total occurrence uh, violation of 64, which we can ensure from here, uh, 53 plus 11, so 64, yes. And uh, these are the details of uh, the typed constant which has been violated. And these are the namespace. Uh, these are the constant level with this. So you can see that uh, there are the namespace violation occurrence of KTS constant replica type. So this is the constant type and uh, number of violation in this namespace is two. So we have uh, exported some utility uh, matrices for the betterment uh, of monitoring. And we have also uh, created some dashboards, which has been, uh, you can find from here. So if you go to the F code graph on a dashboard, let's do it. Graph on a dashboards. Okay. Just giving it github.com. Okay, here uh, in the policy section, we have, uh, for example, uh, these, these uh, Grafana dashboards, you can in, import into your uh, Grafana. For example, I'm going to just close it and put forward the Grafana uh, operator to show you how to do this. So we are going to uh, put forward the Prometheus Grafana, which uh, we have installed earlier into our cluster before, before the webinar. So, we are going to uh, export the uh, Grafana service into the 9091 port. And if we hit onto the 9091 port, it is the, the Grafana dashboard. We need to import here. And you need to just, for example, cluster violation you, you want to import. And just copy it and paste it. So uh, if it is okay, the constant has not been exported. So we need to uh, change those. Uh, for simplicity, we are not going to do that. So you are uh, going to just copy and paste those things into your uh, into your Grafana dashboards to see actually what what the uh, violations are there. Okay. So uh, that's it uh, from the monitoring part. So we have already gone through all the CIDs of the gatekeeper, all the templates and template uh, template constraints uh, and constraints of uh, to actually uh, maintain the policies and uh, violate violation, getting the violation. Then we have actually described the resource graph and policy report, all that. And lastly, we have uh, exported some uh, matrices and the Grafana dashboard. So that's uh, it for uh, for the management uh, monitoring part. And again, uh, talk about the future works. We are uh, going to uh, build a rich uh, policy library for uh, for F code uh, for the policy management. And we are going to uh, show all those things that I have uh, I have uh, showed you to the UI. Uh, over by readers and uh, lastly we are going to uh, export more informations uh, on on the prometheus exporter uh, like uh, all the type constraints and templates and those so uh, that's it uh, for the policy management uh, so if you have any question uh, feel free to ask and uh, un unmute yourself and come on please If you have any question, please unmute yourself and ask. Okay, seems like uh, there will be uh, no question. So we are going to uh, end this webinar today. So uh, Deepo, can you uh, hear me?
Yeah, so uh, this uh, concludes our uh, today's webinar. Uh, thank you all for your uh, participation. Hope to see you again next time. Our webinars are actively scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar to register. And uh, all have a good day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.